So it is Monday, May 29th. Our last growing, our last frost date is um, May 15th, but we actually pretty much have frost after that. I live in zone 5A, 5B, kind of like a little microclimate. And I have a four, almost four month old baby. So I've been feeling very behind in gardening this year. I didn't start any of my own seeds or anything. I have an audience. Um, well, actually I did start my seeds and I killed them all. So I have, I have six garden beds and they're not looking very good. One, two, and then I have like four more down here. And I was feeling very overwhelmed, feeling like, how can I get them all planted? Because I pretty much have to do this during nap time or if I bring my daughter out. You know, it's just harder to work with a baby. So my goal for this week is to get one planted every day. And believe it or not, I actually weeded those two up there not that long ago. And we just had all the chickens and the ducks in here, so it's looking like a mess. This was the duck's pond and stuff, so it's very messy. And I cleaned it once or twice already this year, and it's still quite messy. Um, this is some oregano that came back from last year. Some more oregano. I have a dahlia planted here. And some Jerusalem artichoke planted there. But otherwise, this plant, this bed is nothing. Nothing over there or over there or in my other two. And I really need to weed back in here. An elderberry bush here. Some yarrow in the corner. And so I planted this whole bed yesterday. It took me about an hour, maybe. Didn't clean up my mess because the baby woke up. There's some lavage. I believe it's called echinacea asparagus that the chickens killed. <laughs> um, some more echinacea. And then I have two blueberry plants that the chickens also destroyed. Um, so yesterday I planted some dahlia here. The cafe au latte. It's my first year growing dahlia. So I'm pretty excited to see how that comes out. <laughs> and I did strip of chamomile, German chamomile here. Um, German chamomile reseeds itself every year, it's supposed to. Roman chamomile is more of a perennial, but they're pretty much the same other than that. Some sweet alyssum. I did some more chamomile in the corner. And then I did some summer savory and some like giant basil leaf and dill. And then I got four early girl tomatoes, one pepperoncini, and then a yellow bell. And then along the end here, I did some true hyssop, which is supposed to come back every year. I'm really excited about that. They talk about it a lot in the Bible, so I'm excited to have some hyssop in my garden. Right here, this was a garden bed, but like I just, it went to seed last year, basically. I was very pregnant and in a lot of pain and I had a really hard time gardening. And so it just kind of got overwhelmed. This is mugwort. I have a ton of it around. I love the smell of it. It has really pretty flowers in late summer. Um, and I actually had like rocks going all around it, but they got really messy and stuff. And this is, was actually really good soil. I built it up a lot with compost and stuff, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it now. If I should just turn it into lawn <laughs> or maybe get like another wooden bed. Cause I do really well with these cause I can kind of see like the boundaries better and it's a lot easier to weed and stuff. Um, I have some garlic that came up by itself. From last year I didn't actually plant any last year so that's all that's in here some garlic and then like some mugwort and like plantain and stuff um so I don't know what to do with this <laughs> and I also planted this uh rose mallow and the chickens destroyed it but it looks like it's coming back thankfully I'm excited to see that. It's supposed to get really big and bushy and uh, be like a hibiscus kind of looking flower. So my goal for this week is to get 
one garden bed planted for each day of the week. So six days, one garden bed. I'll see if I can do it while the baby naps. But she's already been asleep for like an hour and a half, so I'm kind of running low on time. I think I'm gonna start with these two here just because they're closest to my house and I feel like they need the most work. <laughs> maybe I should have, maybe I should do an easier one first. <laughs> So this that I have growing everywhere is mallow, it's called. Um, and I had it everywhere. It's actually a medicinal herb. It's really good if you have like mouth sores or anything like that. So I'm always tempted to just let it grow, but I've learned that then it just takes over. It gets really big really fast. Um, but it is a medicinal plant. You can eat the whole thing. And then growing along the edge here, I have this other weed, which is super annoying called creeping charlie and it is attached by rhizomes and it's so annoying like it's so hard to get rid of it looks like this and it just grows everywhere everywhere and this here is what i keep my seeds in it's a uh, um it's used for photos or pictures, but it works really well for seeds. Here's a close-up look, closer up look of the mallow, common mallow, Haley medicinal, and like here's another one. It's got these little tiny purple flowers, and they kind of make like. I don't think this one has any on it yet, but it makes like little things on it that you can eat. I don't know how else to describe it. And they're like little snacks kind of. Um, and then like here's some plantain. You can use this for, um, my chickens ate it obviously, but um, for wounds, to speed up healing, stop bleeding. And here's another little shot of the Creeping Charlie, which is everywhere. It's so annoying. <laughs> Um, which the Creeping Charlie is also medicinal. You can make like a tea out of it. It's also called some kind of ivy or something. And then I have another medicinal plant that's growing right here. These are just weeds, but this is called Teasel. And it um, will shoot up like a big purple flower that's really spiky looking. But this one I've heard is really good for like Lyme disease symptoms. Like if your body hurts, if you have a lot of nerve pain, um, the roots especially. I think I think you just want to use the roots on this one. Um, I I really want to make a tincture out of it, but I have not yet. It's so pokey. <laughs> and my mulberry tree did not like. It came back really weird this year. I don't know if it got too cold. We only had two nights that were like a negative twenty wind chill this winter, but I don't I don't really know what's going on with it. It's got some mulberries coming, but it just doesn't really look the best. Usually, it's completely full of leaves. And even my like weeping cherry usually has tons of flowers in the spring, but it um, had no flowers this year. It just went right to leaves. So I started working on this bed and this bed, and then I got overwhelmed. So I'm just gonna go down and work on that bed down there that I've already like pretty much cleaned up, and it's pretty good to plant because I assume the baby's gonna wake up in a minute and I'm just getting so overwhelmed. <laughs> the thing is that I already weeded those beds twice already this year. No, once. I weeded them once this year, but they were completely weeded and they're already a mess again. <laughs> I prepped this bed a couple weeks ago, cleared it out of weeds. I kind of weeded it again yesterday and I put grass clippings on top, which my chickens have just put everywhere. Um, but this one is looking a lot more manageable to plant. I'm just going through and picking out any more weeds that I see because that really is like the key to having a weed free garden and I never ever keep up with it. I always wait till they get too big like somehow thinking like oh they'll just disappear or something. No, weeds just get bigger. You gotta just pull them out when you see them because it's so much easier to get them out when they're little than waiting until they get bigger. This is like my 12th year gardening and I feel like I'm still just always like 
learning new things. And I try very hard to do like the no dig style, but it's not always possible, but I do try. <laughs> All these rocks come up in the winter. I have no idea where all these rocks came from. They always just appear after like the winter. And <laughs> it's like gardening is just always like, you just always gotta just keep, keep at it. Just keep at it a little bit a day, a little bit a day. <laughs> so this weeping cherry tree, it has, I'm thinking different kinds of cherry rootstock. It must've been grafted. It's been putting up all these little baby cherry trees from the roots. I pulled out a big one here. You can see how the mallow just takes over this bed. Um, but it's been putting up all these little baby cherry trees from the roots. Like here's a giant one <laughs> over here. It's just crazy. All those are little baby cherry trees. But I don't think they're the same kind. I think that's the rootstock. Um, and then this is a Japanese mustard. I planted once years ago and it just keeps coming back. It tastes like wasabi. It's really good, but really spicy until you cook it. Then it's not spicy. And all this is beautiful yarrow. I planted this two years ago. I love yarrow. This is the white kind. It gets really tall. Also very medicinal. You can use it for so many things. Um, mainly associated with blood and blood issues and like stopping bleeding and stuff like that. And this one right here is purple dead nettle, I believe. I don't remember exactly what this one is used for, but it's a medicinal plant as well. So like I said, I just weeded this yesterday. I planted this whole bed. I weeded it the best I can, and then as I'm watering it, I'm noticing all these weeds that I missed. <laughs> that's crazy to me. That's why I say it's just like, that's why I always get behind, I think, because I feel like I did it and then I don't come back and check for like a week. And then it's like, I missed all these weeds. Now I gotta pull them all back. I know there's like a tool that they make that makes it a lot easier. It just kind of scrapes off the weeds, but I don't know what it's called. If you know, please, please tell me in the comments. <laughs> I just got these at Walmart. <laughs> uh, cilantro and basil. I love basil and cilantro. Cilantro sometimes will overwinter too, which is really nice. I just dump it in. thing I like to do when I'm done planting is I'll just lay the seeds down so I can remember what I planted where and then I'll take a picture of it and add it to a folder on my phone called like 2023 garden. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up planting a strip of basil here, and then I did cilantro, some mammoth dill, more cilantro, and then more basil. Never done that before, but I end up usually not planting enough, and then I don't want to use it because I feel like I don't have enough. <laughs> and some yarrow in between. Yarrow is a perennial. It'll come back every year, but I just really love it. It's so pretty, and it's easy enough to just like rip out. This is yarrow, just rip it out if you don't want it. And then I'm gonna do four green beans at the end down here and like a little square kind of a thing. <laughs> These are bush beans, so they don't need any support, but they do get pretty big still. Okay. 
So I have this half planted going up there. The top half was planted. So we just have this little section left to do. I'm thinking I'll put some flowers there because I can see this from my kitchen window. And flowers just make me very happy. And they also attract pollinators. So um, really helps them to get in and pollinate like the green beans and stuff. I need to plant more of this because it did not come back last year. Okay, I'm gonna go plant these some zinnias. This is a cupcake mix. They looked really cute. I've never seen any like that. And a queen lime mix, queen lime orange. Maybe I'll do some of those. If it's too late to plant habaneros. Probably too late to plant lettuce too. It's getting hot. So this is what I ended up doing. I got some bushless beans. Explain the last row to you, the cilantro basil. Um, I did some calendula pink surprise here. I don't know if it filled up all this. I'll just see as it comes up, but I can always plant more. And I did a row of those cupcake zinnias all through here. Stopped at the dahlia. And then some lemon balm in the middle, which is also a medicinal plant. Really, really great um, for like lemonade. Really delicious. And then the yarrow and all of that. So I'm feeling good about this. Got this bed planted. I'm gonna go check and see if the baby is still awake or still sleeping. And then I will water it. Your face is clean now. Zoe, you're not so muddy anymore. So this is another weed that comes up in my garden. Um, it's called poke, I believe, or pokey. I think it's poke. And it's actually poisonous. Like if you want to eat these leaves, I believe you can, don't take my word for it, but I believe you just have to boil them in like three changes of water or something. But I let it grow, even though it's poisonous, I tell all my kids not to touch it. Um, because it's just so pretty, like these stems will turn purple and then it'll have like the most prettiest <laughs> like um, red berries in the late summer and it's just so pretty. I have a ton more oregano going, growing over here. It grows way better in the ground over here than it does in my garden bed. And this is rue. It didn't bloom last year, so I'm excited to see what it does. Um, another medicinal plant, I believe, but I believe it can also can be poisonous or has some side effects or something like that, too. And this skirt is actually a dress, and I'm just wearing it as a skirt. I might actually just cut it up and sew it into a skirt because I think I liked it better like this. Where are you going, bud? My daughter planted this next to her little swing that I made her underneath the cherry tree. But she forgot to water it. It's not looking too good. She's only three years old though, so <laughs> I think it's super cute. And the chickens destroyed this under here. Can't even say how good it feels to get two garden beds done. <laughs> These are probably the easiest. Like I said, the other ones were pretty overwhelming. Um, but it just feels nice knowing that I got something in the ground. <laughs> I always struggle a lot when I have little babies because you just end up with so much to do and, and my attention gets torn, you know, like I have two loads of laundry to fold and it just always seems like a lot and I never know like what should I do next, <laughs> you know, there's always so many things and a million things I need to do and um, a lot of times it feels like I shouldn't put the effort into my garden because I have other things that are more important like laundry and dishes, but um, I read a proverb. There's a proverb that always stands out to me about how you should work on your land first and then build up your house or something like that. Um, so I mean, gardening is important and it does bring me a lot of joy, especially um, when all the flowers start blooming and I can just walk out here and pick cilantro and I don't have to go to the store and buy it and stuff. So. Um, 
yes and even if I don't get to the other four beds <laughs> I can at least just like weed them and just try to build up the soil because the soil is not good at all it's just not good um, I really need to work on it these grass clippings help and then I feel like I should go and rake some more up from the yard but like I said laundry <laughs> laundry stresses me out so much <laughs>